Do you have difficulty using your arm because of hemiparesis related to a neurologic condition? I'm Dr. Judy Gooch, and I'm here today to talk about improving arm use in hemiparesis. Neurologic conditions such as cerebral palsy, traumatic brain injury, or stroke can lead to weakness in one side of the body or hemiparesis. Injury to one side of the brain causes weakness in the opposite side of the body. It can be quite troublesome to have weakness in one arm. With mild weakness, a person can use their arm a little with severe weakness, it might be difficult to use the arm at all. It is good to help a hemiparetic arm be the best that it can be. But a problem with trying to increase strength in a hemiparetic arm and improve use is that often the brain does not want to use it. It tends to ignore the weaker arm. It's not laziness when somebody doesn't use their hemiparetic arm. It's just the brain's natural path to use the stronger arm. But as I talked about in my brain plasticity video, the brain does have plasticity or an ability to change and improve. But again, it takes work and practice for the brain to change. So how do we get the brain to change and better use a hemiparetic arm. You actually need to force it. And there's a technique called forced use or constraint induced therapy. This is where the stronger arm is actually restrained and the person is forced to use the weaker arm for tasks. In formal constraint programs, the arm is casted for a couple of weeks and the person receives a lot of therapy to use the weaker arm. But even doing some of this forced use is helpful. For a young child, the stronger arm can be held and the child can be made to turn book pages with the hemiparetic arm. A glove can also be used on the stronger hand during part of the day. Another good way to improve use of the hemiparetic arm or to force use of that arm is to do tasks that require both hands, like riding an adaptive bike or trike, rolling dough, holding a bowl and stirring. Playing with a large ball. It's kind of hard to catch a large ball with just one hand. Playing drums, jumping rope, or other things that you can do. And actually there's a lot of things that you can do that require you to use both hands. So I talked about in my brain plasticity video, daily practice that is kind of hard, that's variable, is the best way to improve use. Also, if you have spasticity or muscle tightness that limits the use of your arm, botulinum toxin injections might help loosen it so that you can better use it. And this I showed again in another video. But even if you can't use your arm, it's important to spend a few minutes each day stretching it. I'll now show you what others have done to improve use in their hemiparetic arm. As a baby, this child with right hemiparesis did not want to use her right arm at all. By limiting the use of her left arm, she was forced to use the right arm if she wanted to play with toys. When she was a toddler, her left arm was restrained in a vest for part of the day. Again, she needed to use her right arm to play. Other activities she did with her weaker arm were 
unwrapping a package, playing an instrument, and putting buttons in a jar. She has made a great deal of progress with all this practice. This girl with hemiparesis needs to use both hands to play with a ball. This boy with hemiparesis uses both hands on a paddleboard and to swim. Swimming is a great activity to promote use of both arms. This woman with right hemiparesis has developed an amazing golf swing. This young woman with right hemiparesis shows how to stretch her arm each day. This young man shows how he stretches his right forearm and wrist. An occupational therapist can help you improve your arm use and show you how to stretch with your particular condition.